Welcome to the Pokey, er, mm, sorry about that, Pal World Nuzlocke Challenge, where you can only catch one pal from each region. But here's the problem. It's not very random or exciting to just do that in Pal World. So in chaotic fashion, let's take this idea to even further beyond. Let me introduce you to my Pal World Hardcore Eggs Only 100 Days Extravaganza. Let's go over some of the rules to get us started. The entire map has been divided into zones. These are where I'm able to get one egg from each said zone. I have to get the first egg I see from that zone and that egg is well, my egg. If I happen to see something from a great distance and I think that that might be an egg, I have to get to it at all costs to determine if it is an egg or not. And I cannot keep any egg from that zone until determined otherwise. This is a hardcore run. If my pals faint, they're dead. And I uh, have to use the pet emote with a certain item equipped. Every pal I get must also be named to keep track of who is who and to develop an attachment in the event that the worst happens. If I happen to die, it's not quite game over yet. If I have any pals on my person, I can trade one of their lives at random via the spin wheel chaos in order to save the run, making the first part of this run the most dangerous for me. I can rescue pals from cages and buy them from merchants, but they are only allowed for base and must be named in turn something or other. This will ensure a chance to get the right type of pal to get things done around the base. And lastly, I can use breeding, but I got some extra rules for that. I'll go over them once, or rather, if I get to breeding. G'day everybody, Chaotic here! And welcome to the ultimate Pal World 100 Days Challenge. I wake up again on a familiar looking beach with some familiar looking faces. I'm back. <laughs> yeah, you better run. I'm coming for you. Starting out as one does, I grab the fast travel, some wood and stone, and then the second pal that I run into is a goddamn shiny. What rotten luck. I can't even catch it. This, however, does spark an idea. I just had an idea. Only shinies run. I can only catch shinies. After hitting another tree and leveling up, I learned my first engrams. First things first though, and I craft a bonk stick, the lesser cousin of the boomstick. I go and I hit some more rocks and trees with it because we need to upgrade my tools. After I have an ax and a pick made up, I start to craft a new bow. And I had a realization. Honestly, until I get a tame, there's not much need for a base. But right now, the most important thing is to just level up. With a simple plan in mind, I get some much needed experience and I begin my slaughter of the innocent. After my slaughter, I now have some wool that I can use to craft armor. I jump down the cliff to gather a lift monk effigy and then I soon realize that there's no point to these things at all for me because I'm not catching any pals. Anyway, after killing public enemy number one, codenamed Lamball, I made cloth out of wool from their sheared corpses and made myself a very beautiful armor set. With some more palladium collected and levels gained, I make a parachute and gathered some more stone for a shield and arrows. Because uh, we're not ready to fight fucking any of the bosses yet. I think the lowest one we can fight is chill it. And when you land balls want to come help me, I'm not going to tame you or anything. Just just come help. Please? I could really, I could really use the help right now, please. Fine. Don't help. Now that I have an idea of who my first boss will be, the very cute but also incredibly deadly ice dragon chill it. Yeah, he's definitely going to suck trying to fight at my lowly level. Especially without all the pal backup. Oh, before I can get to that, I seek vengeance on the lamb balls though, for not helping me craft. Those fucking dicks. To finish off my amazing day, I cook up some lamb ball kebabs. I investigate a possible egg location too. Yes, there's an egg here. What do we got? It's a, a damp egg. Damn it. With that, I have my first egg. 
It's not what I wanted, but it's mine nonetheless, and he will be my first pal one day. But first, I need to get down chill it for that egg incubator. I built a quick house, yeah, for a bed. And then I hit the hay, ending my first day. After sleeping the night away, we arrive on day two. Just as I arrived on this island, confused and disoriented. Man, I'm gonna need a tea. It's time to come up with a plan. So we're level nine. Seriously thinking we're gonna need fire arrows. So that'll be the goal. We will burn that icy ferret like the heretics of Doom Eternal. Where the hell are all the fox parts? <laughs> oh, oh man, I was like, oh yeah, we're just gonna go kill all the foxes. Apparently they went extinct really quick because there was only one. I continued on deeper inland. Run, Kativas, run. There's the rain syndicate tower. From there, we gain all the power. To thankfully find some more foxes. I enjoyed the sights along the way. Ah, oh, look, there's another egg. Day two and two eggs. We're making some really good progress. I still need that egg incubator though. I find a wandering merchant and realize that some trades are just a scam. I can sell, <laughs> okay, get this. I can sell 86 coins for 13 coins. Uh, 69 wood for 69 coins. Where are the, for the memes alone? With these guards here, I get an idea. Kite chill it to them. I know this is an incredible improbability with a very high risk of death. But hey, we're at the start, so basically fuck it, we ball. Oh, that's ain't good. This, however, fails epically as Chillet runs back to his home as we get to the guards. Damn it. Mission failed. We'll go next time. But hey, at least I didn't die. Since that didn't work though, we're back to the original plan of fire. But I can't find any of these fucking foxes. Though I unlock the fast travel, I continue on searching for the fire foxes to give me their highly flammable organs. But instead, I see the first pal space mission and I watch a jolt hog crisp launch into space. After witnessing this glorious launch, I turned to find yet another shiny. It's a fucking shiny pangolet! You son of a bitch! Like, I'm gonna do an only shinies run and never see a fucking shiny in my life. I guarantee it. With that out of the way, I move on forward, returning to the starter zone to farm wood and other basic materials to craft my fire bow. And as many arrows as I can make. Five. Fuck! Well, I guess it's a start for now. Day three started off with me in the starter zone, up the hill, and I see one of my biggest hurdles from the start of this challenge, the rain syndicate tower. But we're not quite there yet, as we still need pals, and the only way to hatch them is with the egg incubator that needs ancient technology points in order to unlock. In order to get that, we're gonna need to kill one of the open world bosses. Plan, chill it, and to burn it down. Within view of the tower, I see some fox parks, and I need their guts in order to make some arrows. But I only find two, killing them and gathering their fire organs. Noticing my level up, I put the points into health. I'm gonna need all the help I can get. Wandering back to the starter zone, I run into two more fox parts, and they run away, sensing blood. Long live the king. I track down and kill two more firefoxes. Call me Chaotic the Hunter. The way I'm hunting these guys down anyways. Lots of fox parks now. One final kill on the firefoxes and I run back to camp where I make a new accessory, the feathered hairband. This is meant to be protection for my good old noggin. Chaotic can't take any more brain damage. Seeing I need stone and wood to make the three-shot bow, and of course, some more flame arrows, I get to gathering, and on my little farming adventure, some more one-tails show up, only to be shot dead seconds later. 
Once gathered and back at my camp, I craft my three-shot bow first, and then as many flame arrows as I can make. I can make eight batches of five. Eh, that gives me a decent amount with 40 arrows. Look, chaotic in maths. After of which, I need some more stone. And with the amount that I've been farming, you'd think I'd have enough stone to have built the pyramids of Giza. I begin to craft the arrows, but this is taking forever to craft. I need some pals, damn it. But it takes all night to craft 138 of them. In the valley of the shadow of death, I tear apart and collect my things and set forth towards the first major challenge of this run. And no, it's not Zoe and Grisbalt. It's actually this icy ferret, Chillin. I lead the fight with fire arrows, doing a decent bit of damage. Fire versus ice, a tale as old as time. With some tuck and rolls, I dodge Chillet's dragon breath and ice spheres shooting arrow after arrow into this long blue boy. Out. Ah. Da dun. Da dun. Da dun. Da dun. I, 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 I. Oop. Gotta keep a good distance so I can have better reaction times, even though I'm failing miserably. Damn it, chill it. You're not supposed to be this hard. Ugh. Oh, no. Oh, fuck, that hurt. You asshole. Ugh. Whoop. 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 All right. Hop. 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 Now I'm on fire. This is not now. I'm supposed to be putting you on fire. Oh. Oh. And with Chillet now dead, I got my first boss kill of this challenge. Three parts. Oh, we only need to do one boss. I thought we were going to have to do more. But most importantly, the technology points needed to start this off properly. I rush off to glide down the cliff in search of some place to set up. Since this is my next big challenge, I unlock the fast travel for the Rain Syndicate Tower in preparation for when I have to fight the Electric Boogaloo. I try to build my base close by, but I quickly realize that boss towers don't allow you to do that. Got a little love. Got a little nice. Get down and nice. With this in mind, I walk around to find a new spot. It's temporary, but temporary doesn't mean we shouldn't be it's better set up. You know what I mean? Deciding that I need some easy resources, I find the perfect spot. Ringside seats to two mammoths fighting to the death. Perfect. Now, hopefully this doesn't bite me in the ass later. Well, at least I got a show. With the pal box down, I set up my little starter base, collecting materials from nearby trees to finish placing down and making myself a wooden chest to store my valuables. I then place down another chest for the rest of my shit. But instead of using the new box, I gather stone and I work on getting that egg incubator made. ADHD in action. With enough stone mine to build the Great Wall of China, I go off and around the corner to see who else but a wandering merchant. Talking to him, I see that he has some items that I need now, or also could have used back on day two. That being wool for the incubator and fire organs for the fire arrows. That could have helped me kill that frost ferret, you know, sooner. Instead of buying the wool though and saving myself some trouble, I think I want to be both the buyer and the middleman. So I buy some arrows to go kill public enemy number one. Since, however, there's no lamb balls nearby, I go searching for them, killing a fire fox in the process. This is now, however, a fluff crusade, killing anything that gives me wool. But I have this weird interaction with a Kremis and my arrows. With those two Kremis dead and the crusade over, I teleport back to base and finally finish building my much needed incubator. Let's fucking go. Building it, I am ready to actually get some pals of my own for once. Once it's built, I place in my first egg. Two minutes and I get my first pal. Yes! With only 30 seconds left, I start to wonder what could this pal be? Okay, here we go. Everybody hold your breath. 
I begin to hatch it with great anticipation. A <laughs> Our first pal is a celery. Son of a bitch. Shortly after that, I start incubation on my scorching egg. Hopefully, we get something better than a stingray. Yes, I am aware they took out a legend. While waiting, though, I throw out this watery boy to see what it can do. And to my surprise, it actually gathers up random crap from the ground. Maybe this goober will be useful. Goober. It's goober, okay? It's a cute little goober. I level up more health while I wait. Next thing on the chopping block is engrams. I have a bunch and I need some new stuff, so I unlock the high quality workbench, metal tools, and some fur. I, I mean, pelt armor, as well as the meat cleaver for, you know, just in case I meet a premature end. <laughs> Added nearby ore rock within the confines of my base, I build a storage box. Hey, Goober, come help. Don't be sitting over there looking all cute. Get over here and help. Look, I'm building the storage while hammering away at the fucking metal. The least you can do is help. Hey, don't fucking help. Can you at least help me mine this? With my box built, I start smashing the ore. I see that my egg is done incubating. Incubation complete. Please give me something good. A flame bell. At first, I really wasn't excited about it, but it does have level one on kindling, something that I'm gonna need for smelting. Honestly, they got kindling and handiwork and transportation plus farming. I named this little missy Candlelit Dinner. Throwing out my new favorite, we slowly but easily craft a repair bench and then work on crafting even more flame arrows. It's getting late, however, and I need to sleep. So I craft myself a box with an open concept and a shoddy looking bed. But I seem to have used up all of my wool. I pick off some sleeping crevice. Thank you for the wall. Now I can have a good night's sleep after some assembly required, of course. It's day five. We now have two pals, but we need more. I begin to make my way west and I see a verdant egg in the distance. Unfortunately though, it's in a zone that I've already collected my candlelit dinner in. We're not in the new zone yet. Is that a large? It is a large. We're not in the new zone yet. Oh, no. Now that just hurts. It's a large egg, too. My Nuzlocke rules are already starting to bite me in the ass. Not really wanting to leave the better egg, I check my map. Not once, not twice, but four times just to make sure... I was in the right region. I really want that large egg. The fourth time, however, opening up my map, it does show that I am just off the border. If only it was over just a little bit more. Regretfully though, I leave it there. And after a little venture away, I find a chest with gold and arrows in it. Two things that I need. And then I see my favorite pal, a flack, or as I call him, fox. I hit up the small settlement. And if you're new here, there's a couple of different little villages scattered around the map with traders and people who on a normal playthrough you can catch and make them your unpaid interns. Unlocking the fast travel, I'm going through the village to find the pal merchant. As a rule, I can buy pals, limit one per day, entering another house. Here is the wandering merchant. This guy here has nothing of real value other than the wheat seeds that I will maybe need to purchase later. I begin to scour the region, attempting to find my next egg, though. Finding it atop a steep, pointy slope. That's an egg up there. It's a big one, too, maybe. I don't know. It's an egg. Let's go get it. A rocky egg. I stand there for a moment, enjoying the view, checking off this area. Starting to glide my happy ass down the hill, I am nearby a new zone. And while I'm here, I might as well go and get one more egg. I open a chest and, oh look, some useless pal spheres. Looking up the cliff face, I see something green, an egg shaped. And as the rules state, I gotta go check it out. This could be just a lift monk effigy, but we won't really know until we get closer and take a look. I climb on up and I hope it's a good egg. It's just a normal sized verdant one. Also looking at the area on the map, it's also in a previous region that I've claimed eggs in. So. 
I have to leave it. And I glide back down to the floor. The search continues though. And within this search, I climb up some rocks to what I think might be another egg. And it is another egg, but it's a small scorching egg. After picking up my new egg, I look across and what do I see but another egg that I can't get. I do some fancy flying. Oh fuck, we almost died. Damn it. I'm glad fall damage in this game is not as punishing as others. And I climb up after making it across and I find a chest with gold and arrows and then some more useless spheres. Rup. I see smoke in the distance, a syndicate camp. And I go in with one thought, burn it down. Crouching, trying not to be spotted, but that didn't work as I was spotted anyways. I take out the guards, releasing a bristla. And now I have a new sleigh. I mean, uh, intern. Leaving the camp and seeing more thugs in the distance. Candle, it'll fuck you up. I think it's a good idea to name my new pal as it's, you know, part of my Nuzlocke rules. And I name it Intern One. It will be the first of many, I hope. Once naming is taken care of, I decide it's time to put down some of these useless thugs. Where do they keep finding these guys? What's even worse though is that going up the hill, m more of these idiots are just losing to tansies of all things. I put them all out of their misery and I continue climbing and I go for a short glide to get to a better spot. But I get distracted by a chest, which gives me something really useful. A ruby and a crossbow schematic. Rubies sell for a lot, and the crossbow will do more than this old three-shot bow. From a nice vantage point, though, I see another camp, and it's time to go shopping for a new intern. I slide down the cliff. I built my base here on my last 100 days. This much I remember. There was no town here. With most of them out of the way, Candle at Dinner gets a new friend. I then get an odd message that a pal of mine was KO'd. But that doesn't seem right, so I check. And none of them are KO'd. What the fuck? That's, that's just weird. With the Syndicate now dead though, I head to a new area. And I see it right as the new area comes into view. It's another goddamn fire egg. Climbing up, I grab it and... At least it is a large fire egg, so there's a higher chance of not getting another flame bell. Marking off this area. With the sun getting low, I decide it's best to head back to camp and call it a night. Once there, I set my rocky egg to incubate, and I rename my new flame bell to Intern 2, putting it in the PAL box just to start working around the camp. Finishing the day off with upgrading the PAL box a couple of times, I head to bed. I remember that my PALs need to eat, so I place down a feed box to make sure that my new friends are happy and healthy. Repairing all of my items, I'm feeling good about this day. I started harvesting some stone and wood and ore, and uh, you know, while I await for my egg to finally be incubated. Rocky egg hatch. A Dumod was born. Nice. Hell fucking yeah. Dumod is one of the best pals I could probably get at this point. Not only is it great for metal and stone gathering, it's a tank of a pal, and I desperately need to fight that first tower. Being that this is, you know, a ground type fish, it's strong versus electric. I guess we're gonna name Dumud. After a short while, I'm stumped on what to name this guy. Like, what could you even give it? Like, Dumud is such a cool name as it is. Like, what do you even name this guy? With no name coming to mind, I think really hard. What is what is it from Scary Movie? Is it Doofy? Doofy? Yeah, Doofy. Officer Doofy reporting for duty. With this fine fellow, I go to collect berry seeds for my farm, and I get amazed by how bouncy this boy is. I hear suddenly gunshots, though no one at my base seems to be alarmed. What are you doing, Dumud? Oh, you're smashing up the rock. I'm all like, shit, 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 it's the syndicate. Everybody else is like, fucking got some work to do. It's getting, it's getting done. I guess I don't gotta worry about the syndicate. Nightwing is fucking them up. With the bird nice and weakened, I secure the kill. 
and having to fend what is mine, I hatch up the scorching egg. Dun 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 dun. Flame bell, seriously, another one. And it's yet another flame bell. I named this dupe Bella. Seriously though, what what is with all the scorching eggs? I don't know why you are so mean to me, game. If this if this is another flame bell, even though it's a large, if this is another flame bell, freak the fuck out. Somebody's gonna get the race kicked. Placing down a primitive forge, I go back to farm some more ore. With my furnace made, I set my ore to smelt some ingots. These flame bells will be useful for that. However, with the grinding never stopping, I hit my pickaxe again and again to get more ore. Only stopping to briefly repair. I need some new tools, preferably metal ones. With all my pals hard at work harvesting and planting and cooking my ingots, I just gotta wait on this large scorching egg. I still have time on that egg, so with my pals, I craft up some nails and... Yeah, she don't look angry. She don't look angry at all. With 22 minutes on that egg and me needing to wait, I craft and place and build a high quality workbench. At which point I craft myself some pelt armor. This should keep me warm and safe. Nice. With the ingots smelting and the sun getting lower, I call it a night awaiting to see what the next day brings me. With the plan set to head westward, setting out, I contemplate on a plan of action for Zoe and Grisbold. All right, so we need the egg from over there, and then we need the egg from over there. We're nowhere near ready for that overgrown teddy bear. We need a crossbow, more flame arrows, and a few more decent pals at least. Wandering around in search of an egg, I stumble directly into my next world boss. Fang Paka! I don't think King Quaka really gives a shit about our presence. That is an egg. Finding my egg for this area, it's a rocky egg, sadly, and only a normal sized one. After grabbing the egg, I spot another egg. There's the egg over there for that area. Fuck. Okay. Don't even get to explore. Granted, rules state if I see anything, and I mean anything, that could be an egg, I gotta go check it out and determine if it is an egg, just in case. But I really wanted to explore around before I found an egg. I get to the egg and it's just a plain old common one. Just regular old common egg. Oh, we gotta get better eggs than this, man. We're never gonna beat this fucking game. Back at base a little while later and there's still 11 minutes left on this large egg. So to hopefully make it go faster, and because I'm impatient, I place and build a campfire. Though, because I still have time, I decide to mine. Mining away. I don't know what to mine, I'll mine this anyway. While mining aimlessly, I get raided. What? Syndicate's here. The syndicate's here. I throw out Officer Doofy. And he and I get to work protecting this slightly better camp. Dumad, help. Once defeated, I get to mining away. Back up the hill, I went in search of my first boss kill. Kill it. I need a few more ancient parts, okay, bud? I need more incubators, and to get them, I need some more ancient parts, which I can only get from this frozen truck. Yeah, Dumont, we did it, bud! With Officer Doofy's help, though, we managed to kill the ferret again and get what we needed. Returning to base, my large scorching egg is done, and holy shit, a Bushi! We got a Bushi! We got a fucking Bushi! Yes! Oh my god. Alexa, who did Tom Cruise play in the movie The Last Samurai? After asking Alexa, the Bushi was named... He plays Nathan Algren. Okay, Nathan. This Bushi is also a great lumberjack with his blade swift as the wind. His ancient technique gathers wood without even seeing him move his blade. Crafting a shiny new crossbow finally, I'm pretty sure with this and Bushi, the Grizzbolt will die with honor. In the morning, my egg is incubated. Tuko Togo was born. That is such a waste. That is such a fucking waste. Toko Toko! Fuck. That's the worst time to get a. <laughs> what 
<laughs> Let's run. That is the worst thing. Because it just dies. It's like it doesn't matter what I do. It's dead. We get attacked. It dies. <laughs> this, it doesn't even do that much damage. It does like fucking 300 damage and it's dead. Like, six. The only use it might have actually is the egg bomb launcher. That's it. That is it. So, just a quick reminder that this is a hardcore Nuzlocke. If something dies, it's dead for good. And I literally just got the Kamikaze Dodo. I was severely upset at this useless bird. I named it Toucan Sam, like, you know, the, the cereal mascot? Yeah. Anyways, I soon after naming her realized I was under siege again, and I charged in within typical fashion, but with Nathan by my side, nothing stood a chance. While waiting for the final egg to hatch, I set up a mega shield to be crafted. I then headed off to explore, hoping to find some more firefoxes and anything else that I may need. Chillet was respawned and I and Nathan sent this icy ferret into a burning demise. After some more exploring though, I enter my first dungeon with Nathan by my side and I run past some syndicate thugs, finally getting to the final room, and I run into a fuddler boss. And Nathan killed it with effortless ease, doing half of its health in one slice. Damn! Back at base, I cooked up some venison, and then I upgraded to the Mega Shield. Hatching my other rocky egg, it's another Doomud. This can be good or bad? Not quite sure yet. And since this new girl is Dumb as a rock looking, I named her Lloyd. After, you know, those two guys that were stupid and stupider or something. And then I just call it for the day. First thing in the morning though, I upgrade my pal box again. And I think maybe we can take down Zoe and Grisbolt. I just need to level up Lloyd just a wee bit. While out, I run into a herd of Swee and a big ass Sweepa. And Nathan promptly ended their existence. One shot that bitch. Ah, noise. During my leveling process, I get slightly distracted by my IRL pal. This is Shadow. This is Shadow. Shadow don't like being mauled, but yet also loves being mauled. She's a weird one. I continue my journey a little bit more cheerfully, and I stare over the small settlement only to see a large common egg. The level of pain here is high hitting. But as much as that I hate it, I gotta follow the rules I set. It's a large egg. Why? Why do I play with these rules? They're so dumb. <laughs> yes, they are painful, but I am the one who made them. No damn thing I can do about it, is there? Realizing I went the wrong way. Uh, we're going the wrong way. We gotta go this way. I turn my happy butt around to kill the water pals for their fluids to make the most anti-vegan hot tub in this world. Besides the point though, I unlock the fast travel here and I continue on my way killing everything in my path for levels, including all the fox, I mean flax. Entering a dungeon again where I find a Catrice, a level 23 boss that I can kill for some good levels on my Lloyd. Dodging the best I could, Nathan and I try to kill this kitty, but Nathan is completely hungry and is dying. I swap him out for Lloyd quickly. And with Nathan at one HP due to starving and Lloyd getting his butt kicked, I call it and I run away. It's not worth losing any of my pals yet. Once out of that circus, I see a Nightwing eating the Fock as I just killed right before heading in. Is that Fock any good there, bud? Killing some rubies, I realize also, we gotta remember we're in a new zone now, so if I see an egg, I gotta pick it up. Just don't look around too hard. I find a syndicate camp. Get him, Dumont. And I rescue a Mao Christ. This will be so helpful when I get a ranch because these little kitties can make me gold. I love gold. Coming across a Grintail, I decide it's a good idea to hit it with my ax. And all that did was piss off this oversized Chensire cat. This fight was tougher than I thought it would be, throwing and retrieving my pals more times than I could care to count. Nope, return. Finally, after having enough of this fat cat and realizing it's 
kind of getting late, I send out Nathan just to end this. And he does so. Boom. With one day ending and another beginning, I didn't find much, but I found a glowing light bulb tree. Odd, but also kind of cool. Finding another egg. It's a fucking low life, fucking small common egg, damn it. But again, it's a goddamn small egg. What the fuck is with all these terrible eggs? With that area now done, I use the fast travel and I go home, only to hear gunfire. That's never a good sign when you show up home. And yet again, for some reason, my pals don't seem to care about what's going on. This is some grade A bullshit. I craft some more flame arrows and finally a flame crossbow. With my common egg now incubated, it's time to hatch it. We can't be that unlucky, right? Nope, it's another goddamn kamikaze bird. Really? Another one of those self-destructing twats? Why the fuck would you give me another taco taco? Even up to this point, I now have two exploding birds and I still can't make it into a grenade launcher. But for naming, I just went direct and descriptive. We're calling this one, boom. While naming my pals, I didn't hear the shooting going on and I turn around to see Goober just killed one of the syndicates. I guess he was just as irritated as I was and needed to let off a little steam. With me crafting this crossbow and no one helping me, I force one of my pals to help me by throwing out candle at dinner. Once my flame bro, once my flame bro, once my flame cro, once my flame crossbow is done, I make candle at dinner, craft me enough arrows to bring down a mammarist, probably. Teleporting out to the small settlement, someone just died. And for once, it wasn't me, I swear, I'm innocent. But I decided to try and cover my ask by asking the mayor. What happened to you? What'd you do to him? Uh, what, what'd you do to him? Are you pretending not to hear me? Cause I can fucking, you fucking killed him. All right, he was alive when I walked by and then I heard and he falls over. So you fucking killed him. But with the investigation coming up short, I carry on. I'm sure the mayor will investigate themselves and find no wrongdoing. I go to the wandering merchant to sell him my useless crap just to buy one wheat seed. And then I go over to the pal merchant. Finishing off the day when the sun's getting low, I rescued an ichthyr deer from the merchant for my base. Working through the night, I was interrupted by a raid. Oh no, it's a hard to stand behind hands. And everyone here was asleep. Time to put those arrows to good use. In the morning, I was to head to the rain syndicate tower. Now or never. But I second guessed myself. Got 259 arrows. Yo, is that enough? I never feel like that's enough. Fuck it, we'll go make more arrows. With what I believe is enough arrows, I finally fast travel to the tower with butterflies in my stomach. Oh, hey girl, long time no see. How's it been? Give me the silent treatment. Ah, all right, fine, let's do it. Fuck it, let's go. Entering the biggest challenge of the early game with a whopping 30,000 health, I fire my crossbow. Seeing it doing 234 damage on a body shot. Yeah, it's not bad. With Officer Doofy and my flame crossbow. This is so much easier with a crossbow. Hey, hold on, Officer Doof. I deal some hefty damage, getting the first 10K down within a minute. Come on, chase my bitch. Chase me down. Uh -huh. Oh shit, oh shit. That was arrow 69, nice. Uh. Dude, are we just gonna get this with Officer Doofy and the crossbow? Dude, we're winning! 
We're kicking some ass. Dude, he's juking the shit out of her. Go, Doofy. It's your birthday. Go, Doofy. Doofy gives zero fucks. He's like, give it. Give it, bitch. This is the best you got. Flop, flop, flop. This is like Magikarp had some fucking balls. Come on. Doofy, quit hiding behind the pillar, buddy. Yep. Dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Whoop. Nobody said she was smart. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. Dude, we got time to fucking spare. I, uh, he's hungry. Lloyd, your turn. Oh, never mind. Lloyd, return. We're done. With that boss down, thanks to the MVP, Officer Doofy. Thinking ahead to the next tower, my first eggs are perfect now that I think about it because my candlelit dinner and Bella will burn that plant down. I just gotta keep up with some levels. Returning to base though, I didn't realize how much wood my intern had gathered. And yeah, it was a lot. With my new points, I will attempt to craft the metal helmet, metal armor, and a hip lantern. Looking at what we need, it's a lot of shit. Flame organs and ancient technology is the biggest part of it. With Officer Doofy helping, I far more to craft everything I just listed. While hitting the ore, my stone pick broke again. I should really upgrade that to a metal one. But until I have a steady supply of ore, I'll stick with the stone one for now. With all the farming done, I place down a hot tub with a wonderful view over a small cliff, which shows me an egg that I can't get. I head to bed for this day. At least I claim victory over that oversized teddy bear. Starting today, I set my new metal helm to craft and I fast travel to the small settlement, hoping to save the pal from the pal merchant. Perfect. Returning to my base, I see one of my interns is a blaze. And Goober isn't even putting it out. What the hell, bud? With the help of Nathan, I craft my shiny metal hat. And while I'm waiting on my ingots to smelt, I felt like doing what intern four is doing, banging my head into a tree. I build a ranch to have some passive production in the meantime. And with the ranch down, call me Old McChaotic. I collect up my ingots and I craft my shiny armor. Crafting a few more arrows before looking where I can go for my next sleigh. Uh, intern. Which ends up being near the Catrice boss fight. Chicken thought he was about to give me some attitude. <laughs> you motherfucker, why'd you shoot me? <clears throat> Starting my climb up a large cliff face to get a better view, I make it to the top, only to fall all the way back down, nearly killing me. Trying once again for some reason, I stop for a rest, and my character seems to want to imitate the Flash, ready to do a phase through something. Thankfully, my stamina is recovering, even though it has no idea where the fuck I am. Finally making it up the cliff, I arrive at a church, possibly decimated by the very pal they worshipped. Since I haven't found an egg yet today, and with the day getting closer to ending, I fight Grintail for his ancient technologies to make more egg incubators. You know, for the eggs that I don't have. With the fat cat dead again, I gotta level up along with some ancient technologies. But with it getting dark and me having less and less ability to see, I fast travel home for the night. The morning started off in the most chaotic way possible with the syndicate attacking. Soon after they fell, Another group of syndicates raided me. I sent out Nathan and we slaughtered them all. Also at this point, we had an update, a very super useful one, that we can now move well over encumbered. It's essentially like Skyrim, where if you get heavy, you go from jogging to walking. Getting bored though at base, I teleport out to go and find another egg, and hopefully not another small scorching one. Running about, I stumble into a Masanda Lux, a level 31 boss. Not wanting to get my ass handed to me, I leave it well alone for the moment. And I circle around, and I get up onto the high ground. And I say, screw it. And I shoot the electric panda. Haha, <laughs> you can't get me up here, bud. 
after giving up trying to shoot at it because he's just way too strong for me, I carry on for just a little bit more exploring and I find a black marketeer to possibly rescue some much needed pals, but I don't have enough cash to buy the Catrice, nor the arrows to kill this guy to claim it. I don't even think he can claim it, but hey, it'd be nice to think about, right? After the longest walk ever though, I turn around to only look up to the highest peak around and I see a damn egg. How the hell am I gonna get up there? I place a waypoint to where this possible egg was. Still unsure if it actually was an egg. I gotta get up there somehow though, keeping in mind that this could just be a massive waste of time. But for all I know, it could be a land ball up there that's just improperly spawned. Who knows? Seeing how I don't really know if that this is an egg and that I gotta follow the rules, I teleport back home to get ready to climb up that cliffside to get the, uh, the egg or possible land ball. If it is a land ball, it's gonna continue being public enemy number one. My plan, however, is to make myself a grapple gun. For that, however, I need the weapons workbench and that will require some nails. And I'm doing all of this just for a possibility of an egg. But rules are rules. And it took me half the day to come up with enough materials, but I get it made finally. And with this grapple gun, I should be able to scale that cliffside. I grab boom and look at what I need to make gloves to turn them into an exploding egg launcher. Funny enough though, is that I'm missing the pallium. The same pallium that I need to make a crusher that could get me more pallium. Heading across the field to the pond, I gather some pallium with my pick, but the pick breaks again. I'm going to eventually unlock metal tools, but right now I'm just being lazy, okay? And yes, I realize it's costing me more time by being lazy. With my pick repaired and my crusher being built at the base, I can now make my gloves for boom and Toucan Sam, of course. With more pallium on the way, I skip sleeping the night with the plan to go back and see if that was a lamb ball or an egg. And if it is a lamb ball, I plan to blast it into oblivion with Toucan Sam. On my way to that potential egg, I found something better, a large dark egg. Come on, man. I hope to all the holiest of hells that what I saw there wasn't an egg so I can keep this dark egg. I pick up the dark egg just on the off chance that the first one isn't an egg and I don't have to make my way back. After a long run to the egg spot, I use my grapple to get across and I run up the cliff and... Well, shit was an egg. This means that the large dark egg has to go. And it's just a regular normal rocky egg. I gotta drop a dark egg, a large dark, for a fucking rock, oh man. Man, this challenge is really starting to get to me. <laughs> it's done. These rules hurt. Okay. That was a really good egg for what is potentially a really shit egg. It's okay. I need my copy. <laughs> Running myself back down the mountain, still upset at this load of bullshit, and to unleash some pent up frustration towards this challenge, I kill these syndicate thugs who are bullying public enemy number one. That's my job. Once back at base, there are some super awesome syndicates ready to just die, one after the other, falling to Nathan and myself and this bushy Bulbasaur. Da, 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 da. If this fucker's another doom mod, I'm gonna be pissed. My rocky egg was ready, and it's a fuddler. But I'm getting stumped on what to even call him. I came up with the stupidest thing I could think of. Cuter Sandshrew. With that completely original name, I made a plan to head southwest on the map for my next eggs. Going up the hillside, I ran into some syndicate thugs with boom and I showed them the power of this bird's ass. What the fuck? <laughs> that is so awesome. Why did I make one of these sooner? Like I knew it was gonna be good, but I didn't realize it was gonna be this good. Continuing on, I ran into another syndicate camp, finding a new intern for my base. And with candlelit dinner, 
we ended their very short careers. Finding a cool possible base location not far with a very large supply of ore, I come upon another egg. Only a scorching one, but sadly, I already have gotten the egg from this area. But I might as well place down a marker with such a fine place for a base. With another syndicate camp coming upon my path, I have another spot open for a new intern. How fun! Let's hope for something useful this time. It's not the most useful thing, unfortunately, as it's a, just a bunny. I'm sure it will do something at the base, though. With me being in a more dangerous area now, though, I whip out my new favorite pal, and I level a bronze cherry. <laughs> Return before you blow yourself up. That was so fun, not gonna lie. Coming upon the Vagrant Warrior's Domain, I charge in, ready to take down this Grandmaster. Oh shit! But I quickly get demoed. Ooh. And I run with my tail tucked between my legs. Leave, 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 leave! <sighs> Sneaking past all the sleeping pals, crossing a river just to get to a chest. Mega Sphere. Regular Sphere. Garbage Spheres. We don't need fears. We don't need nothing. We are us. With Nathan not able to light the way, I throw out candle at dinner, and she lights as well as an actual candle. Who would have thought? You light about as well as an actual candle. Get the fuck over here. On my next drop, I accidentally look right and see something with a little sparkle, and it looks like another egg. Guarding the area were some syndicate thugs, but after beating them down, I discovered a scorching egg, just barely checking off a new zone near the Alpha Unibolt, which I then tried to kill with Toucan Sam's egg bombs, swapping between all of the pals in my team doing bits and pieces of damage. Almost, we are so close, we are so close, we are so close. Sending Nathan in to finish off this electric unicorn. Nice! Job, Nathan. Not even close. You got you got you got you got more than a quarter of your health. You're good. I continue on my crusade to collect all the eggs. At the halfway point of the day, I arrive at a new island, hoping for a good egg. I begin searching around when a dire howl tries to jump me. And Kidder Shrantru just absolutely demos it. Dude, Shandrew's fucking people up. All right, buddy, that's what I'm talking about. Fucking let's do this. A little while after, I run into another boss. Majesty of Fuzz, King Sweeper. The fight is over in a matter of seconds. We need a nice large egg. That's what we need. We just need large eggs. Give us large eggs, please. I'm tired of coming across the large eggs after I find the fucking small egg. They hold better pals. And if we're gonna beat this, we need more useful ones. And with a hellishly long run around the island, I find another small egg. Damn it. Another area done with another small scorching egg. One positive is, I'll be set with fire pals keeping me warm. <laughs> Fake laugh, hiding real pain. I entered a new area where it seems nothing spawned, only to find, you guessed it, another small egg. Scorching egg. With massive amounts of disappointment that I cannot explain, I went towards the teleporter to go home, but hey, I looked up and I saw a shiny thing. And it's an egg. Now I gotta get it. I just fucked up and looked up. I knew there was an egg on, knew there could be an egg spawn up there. Now I know there is, now I've seen the egg. Now I have to go get that egg. I don't wanna go get that, fuck sakes. Now there's another egg right there, Jesus fuck. I continue grappling up, and it's another small one. What the hell is with my luck? For that little egg, the entirety of Mount Obsidian's egg supply was wiped out. I should have maybe put more thought into these zones. Tired and hungry, with Mount Obsidian being one big waste, I make my way back to camp 
I found an epic metal armor schematic in one of these chests that I looted, something that will be useful later on. Hatching one of the eggs, I get another flame bell. Piece of shit RNG game. Incubating more eggs, I get a van worm and an R socks. Finally, I got something useful, the van worm. I can now fly around. My new pals need names and I already named the first two flame bells. So I'm kind of running out of gas. So I asked my good old buddy, Natural Causes to give me a name. And he said, Wick. And in hoping that somebody takes his car, I name it John Wick. My van worm is now Von Pickle Worm and our Socks was named, well, Socks. I know, all very clever and original names. I picked up the engram for the van worm saddle. I'm excited to get to flying. Problem is I need paldium in which none of my pals have been producing with my crusher. None of my pals want to listen to me, even when I literally throw them to their job post. I eventually start crafting my van worm saddle. I'm ready to take to the sky. So now I can see all the good eggs that I missed. Hatching my final fire egg, I get a kelp sea ignis, who I named Jalapeno, a spicy little lad. We need more interns at the base, so I place down a statue of power and more beds to complete what I need for the next PAL box upgrade. I then headed to see if I could kill Catrice and starting off the fight using Toucan Sam. Maybe this little shit ain't useless after all. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. This is fun. It's running out of time, however, so I finished the fight with Nathan. I tried to fly back to the fast travel, but because I have the memory of a goldfish, I forgot I never even grabbed the saddle. Or wait, did a pal even craft it? First thing after waking up in the morning is a shiny. Figures. Walking towards the sound, I see it's a shiny cremis. Needing those ancient parts, I kill it. I upgrade my pal box again, only to see Toko Toko Explosion Unit. What? This isn't good. Summoning Nathan to take them out. I uh, changed my mind and I switched to Toucan Sam to annihilate his brothers and save my camp. Boo! Boo! <laughs> Fuck you, Toko Tokos. Chaotic's in town with his own Toko Toko built a stone pit and a logging site, but when I recall my pals, it appears that I've broken them? They seem to be stuck in some sort of combat state and are unable to move. It took me a hot minute, but I fixed them with a quick relog. I then changed my mind and destroyed my logging site and stone pit, and then I upgraded some stats at the Statue of Power. Okay, we got a van worm! We can fly! We can fly like an eagle into the sky. While flying about, I come to the lair of the Pen King, and so I have to go wipe out another freebie boss. Entering the fight, I send Nathan to use Brandish Blade, just like Zoro. He deals about a quarter of Pen King's health. Those upgrades are doing some work. After that almost pathetic fight, I fly around some more, only to start starving, realizing I've put all of my food into the feed box. Returning to base, however, I see something even more stupid than I am. The syndicate is attacking a Mamorist. Why? And people worry about NPC control AI taking over the world. Once the syndicate is dealt with, I finish off the Mamorist. Luckily, we suffered no casualties, I think. Well, Doofy is broken again and I need to fix him again. I have a feeling this is gonna be a reoccurring theme. Entering in and out of the game seems to fix this weird aggro bug. That leads into another Toko Toko Brigade. Round two, fight. Here we fucking go again. And just like that, the implosion brigade is gone. And since I'm here with my egg cannon, I get another quick kill on poor old Chillet. This is fun though. Why didn't anybody tell me about this? With nails crafted, from no help given from my pals, I set them to build my medical bench while I collected ore and set Paldium to craft in the crusher. Placing down both a cooler box and a sphere workbench, only so I can upgrade my pal box once again. Uh, <laughs> we finally did it, everybody. I'm ready to get my second base and move the hell out of here. I teleport to the furthest place that I have unlocked, but first, cow. Secondly, 
we are looking for a base with plenty of ore, with hopefully some sulfur and coal. While on my search, I stumble into a large electric egg, and sadly enough, I'm not in a new area, meaning I cannot has the precious. When I'm searching, I can't pass up on the chance to kill the giant water snake, so I pull out Toucan Sam, and I play Keep It Up. It's fucking tough It's fucking awesome. Before sending in Officer Doofy to help finish it off. Carrying on, running into a syndicate camp, freeing a Dazzy, an electric intern that can act as my future power generator. I also take this chance to mess with the Relaxosaurus. Your name is wrong for your personality, bud. With no new base spot found, I, and it's kind of getting late, I set back to base to get some rest to continue my search in the morning. Early in the morning of day 20, I organized my inventory, fast traveled out, and I fly around searching for that perfect base spot. Entering the bamboo groves, hoping for a good base location, or maybe even a good egg. I meander around, resulting in a syndicate camp being raided by, well, me. And a tansy being rescued, only to be used for internship. Though I'm pretty sure its description says I should use it otherwise. Long ago, this pal used long objects like tree branches as weapons. After coming into contact with humans, however, found something significantly better. Guns. Uh, that's funny. Another camp was found soon after, and its caged inhabitant was quite useful. Yeah, also interesting. But as normal, shit breaks. You okay, Nathan? He's right there. Nathan? 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 You okay, buddy? Hey, sir, I'm having a conversation here. You okay? Nathan, you, Nathan, you okay? Nathan? But, okay, like, seriously. Sir, I'm trying to have a conversation here. Thank you. Glad to see you're okay, bud. I carried on searching around, finding plenty of locations that have sulfur or coal or metal, but none that have all three, unfortunately. By midday, however, I also happened upon a black marketeer, and I saw I can get an incinerum. I'm getting him. Just as a reminder though, I can only buy one pal a day, and we're good for today, since I haven't bought any in a while. I then come upon a potential base spot with tons of metal, but it lacks the coal and sulfur that I was hoping for. Granted, I did just find a sulfur node near fast travel, so no need for it to be a base really. Placing down my pal box in the perfect spot, I will start building tomorrow. I lowered the experience today to 5 times, as 10 times was just a little bit much. A small miscalculation on my part. It's still high, but it's not as overpowered as 10, as it's already day 21 and I'm already level 25. It's a little ridiculous. But this day just isn't for messing with settings, we got stuff to do. I demoed the foundations and workbenches around my old camp to build them back up at my new base that has enough metal to build the Eiffel Tower. I'm really glad we can now move overweight though. Best patch ever. So, building montage time. There. There's just, it's too much. You know what? We're just gonna leave it like that. It's unique. Alright, this is our fucking thing. Alright, it looks like we did something besides just press build. There, nobody can't say I decorated. Or that I didn't decorate. I didn't decorate good, but I decorated. Nobody can say otherwise.
Okay, yeah, I'm just did you guess this is it? This is base. It's not looking terrible. We got a nice little house and some decorations. We got this weird looking thing here. And then we got, you know, we got tons of metal that they can harvest nonstop. It's way more important to me than anything else. We can build a stone thing wherever we want. We got the bed section here. I might make this more later, later on. We, 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 might, we might do something more. We'll see. And then we got... Yeah, we got a nice little pond and pool for people to hang out. You know what? The hot tub section might do better over here. Put the hot tub over here. The hot tub's over here, plus the pool. That's the pond. Yeah, and plus the pond. Then go swimming in, you know? Not like it matters, technically, but RP-wise, it'd be cool. Oh, the free pals coming. The free pals want a piece of us. All they ever do is bring sticks. They're nothing to worry about. We get raided, but not really as they can't seem to get up to my base. Hmm. Flying around just to make sure that they actually can't get up. I step a little too close to a syndicate camp. And that has a gunner and a flamethrower guy. And it takes away my shield and half my health with the burn damage. Thankfully surviving the encounter I'll keep that camp in the back of my head for later disposal. This day is going to start out the same as the last two, just hanging around the base, doing the grind. I thought this was the pal's job to do this shit. Placing a logging site to match the stone pit. But in order to upgrade further, I'm going to need a product assembly line. And for that, I'm going to need a truckload of cement. Halfway through the day, at least, the cement is done crafting, but the nails need to be crafted, metal needs to be smelted. So in the meantime, I made myself some actual weaponry. I crafted a handgun. Once crafted, I set the max amount of ammo that I can to craft. Finishing off the day, I farm up some more sulfur for more ammo. First things first this day. I set charcoal to craft in the furnace and berries to be cooked with the cooking pot. Finishing up the ammo, I then set up as much gunpowder as I possibly can to craft. With this crafting taking longer than I expected, it's time for some adventure! And I set out to find some new friends, hopefully. But first, revenge. Flying around, I accidentally crossed into a new egg territory. Before I run into another egg, there was something I had to take care of for now. Though, for Toucan Sam to be able to be used without an accidental boom, I removed the explosion-based moves, making this possibly the best pal to have right now. Without finding an egg yet, I come upon a... We got a skill fruit tray! These are probably one of the best things I can get. But for now, who cares? Geromino! splat directly into a syndicate camp I choose to ignore it and jump down the cliff however there's another syndicate camp that is a fuck I want that fuck with Nathan we start killings of the bad men the sad men behind blue eyes with night rolling around I keep headstrong and moving forward into there he is Jormantide! Jormantide! The king of the seas, or in this case, the king of the pond. We have reached the quarter mark of this challenge. With one of the five towers done and no clear path to victory in sight, I found a dark egg. But once again, it's not a large one. Come on, man, please. Just give me something good. I continue on my hunt for eggs. And what do you know? Another small, but at least it's an electric egg. Something we could definitely use on the team. I come upon a small merchant camp. Electrical stuff. So we could technically get the loop moon and be done with it. And once all the items are sold, I move on to the Icewind Islands in search of my next egg. An electric egg or even a frost egg would be great. But who am I kidding? This is probably going to be another small scorching egg. Ah, uh, here a shiny. The shiny chicken. It's a dead shiny chicken. Thanks for the ancient parts, bitch. 
After the shiny chicken, I find a new egg. And I gladly eat my words from earlier about it being a small fire egg, because it's a large damp egg. All right, onwards to the desert. To the desert. To the fucking desert, baby. Bow, bow. But first, the Dumod boss, because it's a little dopey little guy. Shulk procrastinator is my spirit animal. Although after this painstakingly difficult Nuzlocke, I think it's time to change it to a Depresso. Entering the desert, I'm hot, but I need my next egg. Running into the syndicate thugs, Toko Tokos, didn't dig toys, but unfortunately it's getting a touch warm. So I wait out the heat, thinking that night will be cooler. So that way I can go in without heat stroke. I am unfortunately sadly mistaken, but I'll pay attention as I'm going through to my health. A novelty for me, but I soon spot the egg. What the hell are you doing here, frozen egg in a scorching desert? One of these things is not like the others. Continuing the theme of base building, I place more foundations and move my ranch onto them. After this was done, I continued through the night building new faculties for my pals. But sadly, this tree was in my way, so it had to go. This pal hotel needs to host all of my pals, so I build the first, second, and third level. I find my incubation of an egg complete, hatching a Sui, and soon after, a Meow. The Sui is great because it's an ice type, and it can give me type effectiveness versus dragons. The meow is great because this gold shitting cat, well, shit's gold. Early in the morning, Pen King was born. A fucking Pen King? Yes! Yes! Oh my god! This had me a little bit excited. Not too much though. Pen King Charles. The fifth. I then place down an electrical generator, and while my pals built it, I place out intern number nine, aka. Dazzy, to power this magnificent home that we are building. I then baked up some flapjacks for my pals in celebration. Gotta keep my little interns happy. On day 28, it's now time to get industrialized, putting down and finalizing the product assembly line. Following this, I fly out for some more palladium. And once I had it, I returned to base. What are you doing on the roof, intern 13? What are you doing on the fucking roof? You know what? Fine, fuck it. We can't have nice things because the intern 13. He's just like, yeah, fuck you, bitch. Okay. Can, can we have this? Is this allowed? I don't trust him. I don't trust him. I then teleported out to the small settlement selling all of my valuable items and my old mega shield. With my new money, I buy another loot moon for mass production. I then go to kill off some more alpha pals, starting with the drifting cloud, Fenglope, blasting him with the egg bomb after egg bomb. The fight didn't last very long, but Toucan Sam did take a few hits. Toucan Sam! Dodge! Don't die on me, Toucan Sam. I returned home only to find intern 13 on my roof. Are you kidding me, 13? How the fuck did you end up on there? I had to kill the big llama jama. With Nathan and my trusty crossbow, we take out the King of Pacas. Nice. Moving on with another boss down, I go to the nearby Black Marketeer, who unfortunately had nothing good. I continue on, now searching for another egg, being that I'm in a new territory. Flying around yields an egg, and it's a large one for once, but it's still a scorching. Why can I not get any water or ice? Maybe an electric, well, maybe not an electric. I don't think I really need those. Woohoo! Since I was in close proximity of another new egg area, I decided it's in my best interest to knock this out. Not realizing that within the first three seconds, I run into a small common egg. Great. This day starts with incubating my two eggs from yesterday, getting me a Nightwing from the common egg. We got a Nightwing! Sick! Which I named Dick Grayson. Enough messing around though, as it's time to burn down the second tower. But first, we'll take a look around for some eggs first. Really? 
Can you give me a better egg? Okay, now for the second tower. Fire egg, regular crossbow, and pistol. Let's do this. Bringing in a full squad of pyromaniacs, this should be doable. With the fight already starting off hot, Lily keeps the initial pressure on me. While Van Pick a Worm does his thing. Okay, we just gotta keep an eye out. Dodge, dip, duck, dive, and doop, and duck. Um. Oh! I don't have many bullets for this handgun, so I aim for the head and make them count. Well, as much as possible, anyways. Needing a moment, though, I duck behind a pillar. Oh, you wall hacking bitch. Forgot about that. And just then, she switched her attention to Van Pickle Worm and gives him an absolute beating, forcing me to switch to socks. All right, socks, go! And with the last of my bullets in Lilene's dome, I am now forced to fire the crossbow. Slow, but it seems to be effective, burning her bit by bit. You got the socks, you holding on? No, you're not. Candle, another one, yeah, the one I don't care about. Come on, <laughs> don't die on me though. I don't want you to die, I just don't care about you, okay? This is starting to look good. So far, trading blows, swapping pals, we keep working her down. Oh, you took a hit. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Dunt, dunt, dunt. Another one, but some dust! Dodge, dip, duck, dive, and dip, and duck, and dodge. Go! John Wick! Hold strong, John Wick. Hold strong. You got this. John Wick's taking a beating. We might have to trade him out here in a second. Yeah, we'll just trade him out. Ugh! Okay, go, Nathan, go. With Nathan on the field and half of her health left, I am starting to feel the pressure of her overwhelming might. She might be a spoiled brat, but she sure can fight. We're doing good, we got plenty of time. With Nathan nearly killed oh, off. Oh, I took a beating there that I didn't need to. Oh shit, get back in your ball. I'm now back to socks. And with her at only 25% health left, plus my arrows running low, I'm starting to wonder if I even got this. Uh, no, 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 no. This is getting close. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. fuck. Sucks. Good job, Sarks. Return. Go back. Over here. Let's go. This is going to be cutting it close. Yeah, we just need to run. We need to pay attention here. Stop. Stop. We only got 5,000. Come on. It's 3,000 health. 3,000 health. Come on. 3,000 health. No. Incoming. With a little over a minute left and out of my best ammo, low on health, and my energy just low, we finally land the final blow, taking her down. Yes! Oh, we did it! Oh, we did it. Oh, we fucking did it. Two down, three more to go. I don't know how fuck we did that. I was so close. After my victory yesterday, my large scorching egg isn't quite ready to hatch, but my verdant egg is. And it's a lift monk. Not too useful, but definitely a backup we can use just in case someone dies. Not like that's gonna happen though, right? After a short minute, my large egg is ready and we got another Bushi. 
Jack, I craft heat resistant metal armor. I'm going to need this when I return to the desert for my next egg. Once crafted, I set out looking for a pal to free and a boss to kill. Finding absolutely no pals that are worth saving, killing the Alpha Bushi became my next fixation. Continuing on, I look for some more free interns before I head back to the Alpha Masanda Lux to pick up where we left off. But unfortunately, the Dragon Warrior was unavailable. I go back to my friend, the Black Marketeer, and I rescue a Linaris from him, a pal that I've never even encountered before in any of my playthroughs. Returning to see if Poe has come out of hiding, he has, and I put him down with relative ease. On this day, I want another egg. I fast travel out in search of one, and not far from the fast travel, there is a dark egg. I was hoping for a large one, but I, I guess this'll do? That'll do, Donkey. That'll do. With the dark egg obtained, that crossed out another zone. I teleport to the Verdash Alpha Terminal Dungeon thing? Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. Only to find a large Verdan egg that I can't have because I've already got this zone. Damn it. Going a little bit further into a new zone, I run into another Verdan egg. Yay! Grabbing it, I continue to the next zone, unlocking a fast travel in the process before getting yet another Verdan egg. Tired of my disappointment, I go into a dungeon hoping for a challenge and possibly good loot. I'll save you the next five minutes though. No challenge and no good loot. Though Toucan Sam's egg cannon is still awesome to use. Fire, fire, fire. I woke up and I set sail ready for adventure, running right into the free pal alliance with a do mud in a cage. That's not really a free pal, is it? <laughs> Setting the Doom Mud free, he became my next intern. I need another egg though, so teleporting to the Verdash terminal, I go to find another egg nearby. And this one is a large, uh, again, a Verdant egg. I'm sensing a pattern here where I get a lot of the same type and they're typically bad. Just my luck, right? Verdant egg after verdant egg. God damn it, can I just get one? Just one useful egg, please. Later in the day, I'm in the last area that I feel like searching for. The RNG is killing me, but I'm making it work. And I travel through the small volcanic patch and what do I find? But a huge verdant egg. I just found my first huge egg. And it's in a new location! But why couldn't it have been like something that could help me with like the fire or electric or ice towers? <sighs> After that huge find, I go back home. And with a little help from my pals, I place down a weapons assembly line. Finally, this is where the magic will happen. This day is starting with hatching my large verdant egg, getting a Masanda and thinking about it. It kind of reminds me of a teddy bear. Hmm, that could be his name. Anyways, my next base upgrade mission to build a sphere assembly line. About as useful as a screen door in a submarine this run. But I need the upgrade. I set up a second wheat farm and right after that, hatch a bee guard. Oh, I got a bee guard out of an egg, nice which is almost the final ingredient I need to make cakes so I can breed pals. Anywho, the dark egg I got hatched into a loop moon. Call him Steve. And the huge egg gave me an Elizabeth, which I named Queen, Queen Liz. Queen Liz. With this monarch hatched, I wait for the incubation of my next egg. At the start of this day, my ore is smelted. Time to put it away and get more smelting. When it was done, I ended up placing the sphere assembly line, helped my pals build it, and proceeded to upgrade my base, and then demolish that sucker for my materials back. I go to hatch another large verdant egg when suddenly, 
Free pal extremis. Eh, fuck. They can't get up here. We're good. Oh, no. Anyway, I returned to hatch my egg and get a robin quill. So naturally, I named him Hoods. I fly out in search of an egg or something useful, only to find another scorching. It's not even a high level scorching. Just a little one. Heading to the fisherman's village, I locate yet another scorching egg. Ah, it's a regular old searching egg. Hey, it's a blaze hole. I got to the fisherman's point just to unlock the fast travel for later. And moving on, I head up the mountain, coming across the giant Anubis statue, and I collect up those incredibly valuable skill fruits. And continue on to unlock the fast travel, where I discover a huge disappointment. It's a huge scorching! But we already got it! Fuck! Damn it! I really need that egg! The pain is real! I can't believe I'm leaving this fucking egg! Grabbing the fast travel to Axel and Orsok's tower, my arch nemesis from the previous 100 days, I continue my travels to the other side of the mountain to the ancient city where I hope to get something better than a small scorching, where I find a long since destroyed keep with, you guessed it, a small scorching egg. Thankfully, however, I'm not in the city yet according to the map. I make my way down and... All right, now we're officially into the green. Okay, cool, now we see an egg, we're... Going to have to get it. It's a fucking scorching egg. <laughs> On top of the tower. Why didn't I see that one? That one's so easy looking to get. That one's even bigger. I hate my rules. I hate them. I hate them. But thankfully, I was able to scoop it up while riding Van Pickleworm and carry on to the next zone. The wildlife sanctuary. I looked around for a long, long long time seeing crazy awesome pals and collecting loot but no eggs wait do they even spawn here after an intense google search i discover that they in fact do not killing off three of my potential egg zones all at once see kids this is why you research before doing a project don't pull a chaotic Disappointed with my discovery, I head home and I clean and organize my junk while waiting for my recent eggs to incubate. Hey, they're they're ready. We're gonna hatch them up. A Les Punk Ignis! And another Kelpsy Ignis. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. We'll we'll come up with some names here. Kelpsy, we are gonna call, alright? We're gonna call him Fire Salad. Okay, boom. And, and and this one, we're gonna call. We're gonna call him Fire Skate Er Boy. He sure's a skater boy. She said see you later, boy. So he turned into a fire pal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> that works. <laughs> that does not work. That does not work. <laughs> Today, I'm getting the trip to the settlement out of the way to check to see if the Pal Merchant has something I need. And he has a lamb ball. Finally, no more slaughter of the innocent. I hatched a brand new Van Worm soon after. It's a Van Worm. I like that. Van Worms are awesome. We got a pickle Van Worm. Now we got Von. We got Von Pickle Worm. And then this one shall be called, um, Q. This will be Q. Q is in cucumber. Ha ha. Yo, can't tell smart to me. I guess I'm running out of naming ideas. Anywho, I placed down the quality hot springs for my pals, allowing me to be able to upgrade my pal box to 15. Normally, this is the max amount for pals, but I altered the settings before we started so I could have more. With that done, I upgraded to a giga grappling gun 
Unfortunately, my footage was um, MIA for my folders. Possibly stupidity on my part or corruption of them. No idea. With the tragedy of day 38 now behind us, it's time to get serious. Today, I'm feeling violent. So alphas are gonna feel my wrath. Starting with Elizabeth and her B guard minions, she is no match for me. And I was, uh, well, and truly scared of this fight, honestly. And no, it's not because of the Elizabeth, it's because of the B guard that could royally mess me up with her self destruct like they did in the last 100 days. Once the Queen Bee was dead, I unlocked another fast travel and I went for Alpha Dran's head next. I guess he should have Alpha ran away. <laughs> yeah. I know, bad joke. Anyways, I'll show myself out. Next on the chopping block is Warsec. I really don't have a joke for this overgrown stag rhino beetle hybrid thing. It got its ass handed to me though. Aha! Following Warsec's defeat, I unlocked the fast travel for the Gobvin's territory and I returned home just to hit the hay once more. I started this day by heading to the small fishing town, selling my precious items and buying some much needed ammo. Leaving the fishing town, it's time for another alpha. This time, the Bronze Cherry Agua. Eat shit and die, you big ass fucking Bronze Cherry Agua. Literally, the only thing funny about this fight is how much damage Toucan Sam's egg bombs do. I found a shiny lamb ball. One word, die. I need the ancient parts. Since I'm bored and need time for looting, I enter a dungeon and hope for a challenge, but also to use Toucan Sam on the alpha. The alpha was uh, cognito. Too bad he wasn't in cognito mode. Maybe he would have survived. Leaving the dungeon, I resource another pal. It was only a flame bell. Don't worry about it. Flame bell, flame bell. I headed to the desert island where I quickly stumbled upon an electric egg. And then ventured into the next zone where you guessed it, another electric egg. Hey, at least it's not another scorching. Before finding a shiny Rayhound after nightfall, I flew around during the night in search of more eggs but didn't find any until dawn, where I found yet another electric egg. You're joking. Not another one? Teleporting to the fishing village, I sell all of my worthless items before fast traveling back to base to hatch up a jolt hog and a spark kit. Not too sure how I feel about these two. Naming them Sparky and Pikachu. No, not peek at you, peek at you. Hatching my last egg, I got yet another spark kit. For fuck's sakes. Fuck sakes. Fuck sakes. Fuck <laughs> sakes. Damn it. Aaron, what? I'm not changing it, even if it is better. <laughs> Heading back to the small settlement, I rescued a chickpea, which allowed me to finally get all the resources so I can start crafting breeding cakes passively. I spent some time upgrading my main pals at the Statue of Power, but what's the point of having all these souped up pals if not to use them? Die, die, die. Burdash put up a little bit of a fight, but got burned down by Van Pickle Worm. Finishing day 43, partially crafting that purple armor schematic I got all those days ago. The next day, where there was a bit of a time crunch and metal armor was produced, but I now need cement, so, Pal murdering time. This was primarily water pal slaughter for the, you know, pal fluids to make the cement. My pal box can finally be upgraded again. Cement can now be crafted. And with the cement, I upgraded my furnace. And it's time to set up a new breeding base. The next door syndicate camp was wiped out for the new breeding base. Building my brand spanking new pal box, I fill my inventory with much needed coal, waddling my way back home when a raid occurred and panicking me, I teleported home, hoping to cancel the raid. It, it didn't work. Fearing for the lives of my pals though, I deposited my coal and I met them in the middle to protect my pals in glorious combat. Now that both the Syndicate and the Free Pal Alliance have been wiped out, 
it's time to begin construction of my new breeding base. And it's time to go over those breeding rules. I can breed, but any babies that I get are to be used as interns. If I want to keep said pal for, from breeding to use it for battle, I then have to sacrifice not one, but two random combat pals. This will be done via the Chaos. This even includes any previously bred up pals that I've already sacrificed for, potentially with some bad luck killing one of my new bred up pals, leaving me with a small sense of despair if I choose to breed for more than one replacement pal. It's day 46 and it's now time to get to breeding, but it started off with a raid. Go figure. I then hit up Google and I started searching around, trying to find the fastest route to a powerful ice type pal. Quickest route, no freeways. I decided to try and get an ice king pocket. To breed that up, I will need a Rangerix and a king paka in order to get the egg for it. But in order to get king paka, I need to breed Nightwing and Pen King. Mm, in order to get Rangerix, it will require a Dumud and a Celeray. I also want to breed for a dig toys or two for auto harvesting coal and ore, and that's going to require a Masanda and a Tansy. Very odd breeding combos if you ask me. After hatching the first icy reindeer, it's unstable, just like my mental state after this godforsaken challenge. Up next is the fluffy Mama Jama King Paka, before breeding it with the ice deer. To get a huge frozen egg. Ugh two days to fucking hatch this? Really? So while I was waiting for the egg to hatch, I get my giant teddy bear to spank my little monkey, and it wasn't long until I had a dig toys. Damn, these Beyblade plows do some work. Let it rip, bud. Give me that ore. After all that work, I finally hatch a King Paca Chris to take down that Garchomp from Wish. But as you know, I need to sacrifice not one, but two pals for this King Frozen Llama Jama. Now it's time for the Spin Wheel Chaos! First pal that gets shanked is... Ah! Boom! Yay, boom! We got fireworks, yay! We have a winner, technically a loser. First to go was boom. Not a huge loss, is it? We still have Toucan Sam. Sorry, Boom. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Remove Boom. Here we go. Here we go. That's fuck's sakes. No, not too good, Sam. You son of a bitch. You lagged. Not too good, Sam. <laughs> I'm like to get Sam. Fuck. No, it should have been fuck six. Why did it do that? It lagged. It lagged. It stopped on fuck six and then it ticked over and it went to fucking to get Sam. Fuck. The wheel works in mysterious ways, but it doesn't get better. How can I murder my own friend? Two can't say when I've killed so many bosses. I'm, I'm sorry, buddy. I really am. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that is so terrible. I, I lost both of my exploding boys. Moving on, I hatch out another dig toys, and like all the others, I name them Intern. This one was Dig. I kill the King of the Forest Mammarist for his pal oil for some polymer, and then kill Bailet? Bailet? Out in the desert on day 53, I stumbled upon Anubis. This pharaoh wielding ultra instinct will kick my ass. So I pass. Going instead to take out the boss Nightwing with absolutely no trouble. Next is Felbat, who fell just as easily. 
After the ammo usage from the boss rush, I head to the fisherman's outpost for a quick restock. I find myself in a brief fight. Man, I like these shot grenades. I wonder what else I could do with them. <laughs> that was so cool. I then learned the sniper rifle from Team Fortress 2. Crafting my new toy early into day 55, I go to the desert soon after, only to then fly around, opening everything and picking up anything I can, even an accidental liftmuck effigy. Didn't I say there was no point in picking them up on like day two? Flying even further, I met a necromess and a paladis. I am glad they are more than just statues. Continuing on, I get a small jump scare from a syndicate. Oh shit. Fuck! Dude's got a rocket launcher. Who the fuck gave him a rocket? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not fighting you guys. I'm not fighting you guys. Bye. Flying away from the chaos, I find myself in the desert, Dune City, where nobody has anything of use. After collecting an egg from the city rooftop. I start a new adventure into the dungeons for levels on my Icy King Baka, nearly losing my life while uh, Steve just idly sits by. I hope you are what I roll if I end up dying, bud. That hurt! Steve! 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 Get him! Steve! Still in the dungeon, lost to all heck, I press on with Queen Liz. Well, because Nathan and Steve are kind of hurting. Killing the Les Punk boss and escaping this horrid maze, passing by the Alpha Suzaku. I'm only level 37 right now. Not quite enough high enough level to kill it yet. I found another sand dungeon and let's run this shit again. I quickly make it to the dungeon master, a Fenglo? Killing it, I claim my rewards and I head back to base, where I hatch another spark kit. Stop giving me useless crap, man! Heading back out to the volcanic area, I find and kill a lucky flame bell. Well, I guess it wasn't that lucky. Continuing on my outing, I find another dungeon to gain more experience for Ice King Lama Jama. Slaying the dungeon lead and the dig toys, I push him off the cliff, claiming my throne. Long live the king. Once out, another cave is quickly discovered nearby. This time, however, at the end of the dungeon, a fuddler was burning himself in the lava. Guess he just would rather die that way than by me. No, oh well. Back at base, I upgraded my bed and I set my bee guard and van worm for some weird smexy time to hopefully get me an azarobe. egg. I need some more loot and well, let's just montage through day 61, grabbing chess. Starting today is crafting handgun ammo, but that's not the mission of the day. That's searching for more chests. We need gold and souls. Hearing a shiny, I destroy it and kill the rest of them. Following this, I add a few new interns to my compound and I finish the day by destroying Quivern. Collecting a few bits of pal oil to make polymer and needing even more polymer, so I head back to the desert. Taking down some wannabe King Mamorous. Starting to craft a shotgun at the end of day 64, working well into day 65, when I finally get the semi-decent shotgun crafted. The shells are loaded, we have a quick raid to deal with, and then it's time for that third tower boss, Axel and Orzerk. I have yet to kill them in any of my playthroughs, and I'm honestly a little bit terrified of failure here. But the show must go on, and I make my way there, ready, for victory or defeat. Let's do it. With the third most powerful tower underway, I'm... Yeah, not too excited about this. Not too excited about this. Taking advantage of uh, King Llama Jama freezing Orzark, I blast shot after shot into this off-brand Garchomp. 
Uh, that's a lot of death. That's a lot of death. Dodging fireballs and dragon's breaths and even thunderbolts straight out of Zeus's domain. King Frozen Llama Jama and I are slowly whittling him down. See how that seed bomb does. The pillars are my friends here, but any of his hits hurt like hell. Oh, that really hurts. That really hurts. That really hurts. Shooting enough bullets to light him up like a Christmas tree, it would really help to just have an AR. I missed the giant ice block. Unfortunately, though, I'm just a little bit late on a dodge. Fuck, fuck, fuck! Oh! But thankfully, he doesn't capitalize on me getting stunned. Thunderbolt after Thunder Sphere after Dragon's Breath. I need him down and out, but we're just over half health. With King Frozen Llama Jamma getting low. Come on, pay attention to me. One of the biggest problems I'm having is that that Thunderbolt comes from the heavens itself. No, oh, no, 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 no. Just as the Thunderous Duel reaches half health, my self-assurance dies. And, well, we ain't winning this. But I'm refusing to give up. No! Oh, no. Well, never mind. Before I can go and reclaim my things, we need to spin for, um, unfortunately, who's taking my place. Rip Steve. Ah. Steve. Sorry, bud. I really am. I'm so sorry. Better you than any of the other choices, though. With that, I hang up the meat cleaver once more, and I rest, hoping that I don't have nightmares about this tragic event. Regaining my things after the tragic death of Steve, I repair my gear, and I go out to collect the last few eggs I can to replenish from my recent losses, and to hopefully get some more ice pals for Axel and Orzik. With the handful of eggs, I begin to place them into the incubators, and hopefully they will help me beat that boss and win this challenge. We're gonna, however, need better gear. For that, I'm gonna need high quality pal oil in order to make more polymer. So out to the desert I go to kill every do mud and dig toys I find. And it's a lot. After that massive farming session, I drop by Anubis and see some syndicates fighting it. I like how they thought they could take this fucking legendary pal. Hatching my last few eggs, I get a Van Worm Crisp and pick the most original name anyone has ever thought of. Van Pickleworm Crisp. <laughs> I also get a Sibilix and a Cryolynx, which are named Sexy Snowman and Frozen Tasmanian Devil before pumping King Frozen Llama Jama's health, attack, and defense through the roof with pal soils. I beefed myself up a bit too by starting to craft an uncommon assault rifle. With my new assault rifle and my King Frozen Llama Jama beefed up, I'm starting to feel a little bit more confident about this challenge. Back to prep, I buy as many bullets to get started, but I need more bullets. With my minimal bullets, I go back to the desert in search of bosses to kill for experience and more pal oil. But I find a black marketeer and uh, I get some dark thoughts. As I shoot a fireball at him with Van Pickleworm, it was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. I quickly realized my mistake. Okay, we fucked up and I get the hell out of there. Continuing the search for experience, I make a quick run through another dungeon, only slowing down the fight the Les Punk Ignis. With the dawn of a new day, I kill another boss, Menestang, before taking down a dungeon with a Blaze Howl. 
getting a skill fruit that will be useful in an upcoming boss fight. Crisp breath. Back at base, we hatch a chillet, Raindrix, and a Suzaku. Goddamn, I've wanted one of those. He's going to be my best friend forever. Such a sick looking pal. I named them Dude, Rudolph, and Phoenix. Time to harvest some virtual materials. Well, my pals will anyways. I'm going to go get something to drink. It's boss rush time, killing Dinosome Lux, Patella, Alpha Dran, and Warsex, leveling up Phoenix to make sure he's actually usable, and collecting all those precious items to sell for some more bullets. Continuing my trail of death, call me the Reaper as I kill the Quivern, Pen King, and the King of the Forest Mamorist again, falling one after another to get me and Phoenix levels preparing for revenge. Rest in peace, Steve. I continue on my expected killing, and and more Alpha Pals die, starting with Felbat, going to Catrice, Felet, Grintail, Masanda Lux, all falling easily to me and Phoenix. With the vast majority of high-level Alphas wiped out, I'm now forced into killing low-level ones for just about any amount of experience and money I can get. Now I want to take down that Alpha Suzaku to prove that not only Phoenix is better, but to also get that legendary shotgun blueprint. Though with that is pretty much unlikely to happen as it has a low drop rate. After a really tough fight, he falls and drops the legendary shotgun blue ring. <laughs> I got the... Damn, that doesn't look good. I can't believe it. I got the pump shotgun legendary. First fucking shot. Fuck. I can see the comment section already. That guy is fucking cheating! HE'S CHEATING! So... Kinda got a little bit of luck on my side. I got the legendary schematic for shot. Oh, yeah. Hacks. Cheater. I know, rigged. Rigged. <laughs> rigged! It's rigged! Rigged. Create a luck. Rigged. Unfortunately though, my good luck comes to an end as I need a metric shit ton of pal oil in order to craft it. So, another fine day for farming oil. Maybe I should become a US citizen. Continuing the massacre of pals to exploit them for their resources in the name of freedom to craft my legendary pump shotgun, one after another they fall just so I can get my new boomstick. With Nathan by my side, I go back to the king of the forest to collect his fatty oil to make some more polymer. With my preparation almost done, soon I will have my revenge. At last we will have revenge. With the bunch of carbon fiber needed and a little bit more polymer and enough refined ingots to build the Titanic, I almost have enough for the new boomstick, but I'm still shy of some coal. So, mining away. Ba -da 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 -da. Just needing the last bit of refined metal, I struggled to get my fire skater boy off my forge and put Phoenix on it so I could speed this process up. With the metal all smelted, I set the shotgun to craft at the end of the day. Finally, taking the next two whole days to craft it. Damn, this is such a pain. Finally upgrading to a proper boomstick at the end of day 84, both me and my pals are tired from the constant work, and it's time to take a nap. Back at Axel and Orzik's tower, rested, and with a bunch of shotgun ammo. I'm back, bitch. You killed Steve. Not happy about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's go, let's do this. Are you ready to die? <laughs> That's some damage. Yeah, hold him down. Oh no. Fuck, 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 fuck. Where'd he go, where'd he go, where'd he go? Dodge, 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 dodge. Oh, look at that damage. Run, 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 run. Attack me. Protect me. Oh, shit. 
Dun 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 I'm loading everything! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Get the grenades out! Oh fuck, Lemma Jama hurting. Sexy snowman, go! Making some really good time. Can't die. Just gotta let my shields charge up. There they go, they're going up, they're going up, they're going up, they're going up. Is he stuck? Oh, we're doing really good, really good, really good. Come on, just don't die. Oh, we need shields to charge. We need shields to charge. We need shields to charge. Oh, good job. Good job, Van Pickle Worm. Good job. Let me run. Let me run. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Frozen Tasmanian Devil, your turn. Go. Oh, I'm on fire. I'm on fire. Oh, this is going to really hurt. Oh! Down he goes! We fucking got him! Holy shit! What's that? <laughs> Holy fuck. Can't believe we did it. With that legendary boss fight oh. taken down and Steve's revenge satisfied, my face just says it all. This victory I gathered up some quartz for more advanced components. I'm gonna need to finish up this challenge. Two more towers to go. By dawn, a few circuit boards are crafted to upgrade the production line to its better variant. Placing in a metric shit ton of shotgun ammo so I can craft. While my pals are going strong on my ammo, I need more levels for the assault rifle ammo. So back to boss kill montage. Just kidding. I killed them all. We don't need to see that again. I need some icy organs to make a fridge. So I collected some from a few ice pals near the Lily and Lilene tower. While waiting on carbon fiber and ingots to be readied, I sat around at my base letting my pals farm up more resources. Good job, guys. That's what I'm paying you for. Entering a dungeon on day 90 and exploring through it, I almost die in a chasm. But with some quick climbing, I'm fine. Killing a Reptero, I claim my rewards and I get the hell out of there only to fight the Menestang again. And of course, Suzaku, just to put him in his place. No shotgun blueprint this time. I ain't that lucky. Again, needing some more quartz for circuit boards and for more upgrades around my base. And also needing more money for bullets. I set to killing the wings of the white quivern. Not too far off, I find another damn shiny. Now Chris, so I kill it for its ancient technologies. Those are worth quite a bit. Vengeance is mine. It's not the same one, but hey, that doesn't matter. With my resources, I craft a Giga Shield and to think that we've come so far from when I was getting my butt kicked by Chillit. So let's test out my new shield by entering an ice dungeon. God, Phoenix and I make such a good team. Where again, I have to kill this cuddly dragon, but even though it's dead, the barrier didn't fall? What the hell is this crap? Before leaving, and getting my true final leg of this adventure. I've reached the highest peak of Pal World, and it's just beautiful. I head home, and I let refined ingots be smelted while new electrical forge is being crafted. So unfortunately, the footage here got Thanos snapped away, but it's all right because all that was done was finish building the electrical forge and replaced all of my crops to be more organized. It's time though to finish off some loose ends and I proceed to hunt down the other world alphas and bosses I've yet to kill. Jormantide falls, but his items fall under the water where I can't get to them. 
I guess the saying is true. You can have your cake, but you can't eat it too. Anywho, after that complete train wreck, I fight Anubis. Dun 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 dun. Get him, Dofy. Okay, the fucking Toko Toko Death Squad must die. Okay, Anubis is cool. I want one. Down he goes. With only four days left and two towers to take down, I need experience. And the best way to do that is by killing Alpha Pals. So I kill off Lunaris and Bron Cherry. Now, finally at the level needed for assault rifle ammo, I can make my own and maybe save some gold. I love gold. With only two days left, it's time to prepare for the final tower. That I'll be able to take on with the time that's left in this challenge. Sorry. I started crafting gunpowder needed for the rifle and shotgun ammo. I organize and pick my pals for the final confrontation as I just, I don't have much in the way of strong water pals. I picked the best that I got for this, which was Lloyd, Nathan, Phoenix, Officer Doofy, and lastly, the cute and cuddly goober. Yeah, my RNG was really not in my favor for this fight at all. There's only one thing left to do. I want to take a moment to thank you for watching this far. You are awesome. And lastly, a big shout out to all of my Patreons. You have helped me more ways than I can explain. Thank you for all of your continuing support. By the morning of day 100, I'm as ready as I can be. Locked and loaded, I fast travel to the PIDF tower getting ambushed one final time by some Robin Quill Toeras. Boys, girls, gentlemen of all ages, I'm not dealing with you. Quickly evading them, I head in for my final challenge. Firm. Bottom, 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 bottom. Let's do this. Marcus and Felleris. Ready to put out Marcus's fire, I send out Goober. But he quickly turns up the heat. I return in kind with a little heat of my own. Oh! <laughs> Will you stop focusing on me for a minute? Like Lloyd's just over there like da -ba -ba -da -ba -da. You're just like, I'm not gonna deal with that stupid ass doom mud. After a lot of back and forth, I feel like we're winning. Well, as long as we keep avoiding his attacks, that is. We got our shields back. Oh, I was not expecting that. Oh, Doofy, no. Return! Boom! Look at that hit, Nathan. Good job. With Marcus and Fowlerus nearly at half health and double the amount of time left, I'm starting to finally feel confident. I will take them down and claim victory. Oh! Nathan! Nathan, no! Return! Oh, this ain't good. This ain't good. This ain't good. Stop being on fire. Stop being on fire! We're on defense mode. We're on defense mode. We're on defense mode. Rolling. 
Rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep that shit a rolling. Get my shields back up and down. Hopefully without a dime. Shields are up. Fuck, oh, that was close. Leave me alone, you cheating bastard. Le oh, oh, fuck. Return. We're running low on this. Unfortunately, my rifle ammo is starting to get low. This has been my main form of DPS for the entire fight, but at least I still have my shotgun when it runs out. You're in the way, Phoenix. You get the shields back up, shields back up, shields back up, shields back up. Two minutes left, two minutes left. With the clock ticking and only 40,000 health left, I'm starting to feel the fatigue of this battle. I but I still feel like I got this. I just gotta keep paying attention. Oh. Fuck, fuck, fuck! Doofy, go! Oh, no! Fuck! Son of a bitch. I don't got enough bullets to redo that. Well, that was unfortunate, but I still got some time left. I gather all the resources and high value items that I can carry, and I head to the merchants of the fisherman village. Weirdly, being unable to climb up the stairs, I have to lighten up my load a bit so I can jump up. I grab what I can within reach, and I waddle my way to the vendor, selling all of it. I then collect up what I couldn't before that was on the ground so I could sell it off too. Buying as much rifle ammo as I could, thinking that that's definitely not enough, I'm gonna have to make some more trips. But first, I head to gather my things from the PIDF tower and settle some unfortunate business. The Spin Wheel Chaos! Since I, uh, unfortunately died, I now have to trade one of their lives. Thankfully, none of them bit the dust during the fight. No, 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 not Phoenix. No, not Phoenix. He's my best pal. No. Uh, no. Uh, oh no Not Phoenix Look bud I'm really sorry okay but rules are rules okay without rules we're nothing but animals I'm sorry <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I have you. Son of a bitch. Ah. Fuck. Rest in peace, bud. I will avenge you like I did, Steve. I grab what's left of my high value items and I buy what little ammo I could. And then I return to the PDIF tower, ready to end this once and for all. I come here to avenge Phoenix. He will never rise from the ashes of this. This is totally your fault for being so fucking powerful. You don't care, do you? All right.
Damn it. Oh, ho, 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 ho. No, Doofy. Lloyd, go. Through the fucking thing. Wall hacking piece of shit. Good dodge, Do Lloyd. Good dodge. Stop drop and roll! Stop drop and roll! Stop drop and roll! All right, Nathan. What bullets left? Oh, you almost pushed me into that. Damn it, Nathan. Why'd you jump in on that? Fuck me! I was trying not to get hit by that. We might die. Fuck! Oh, <laughs> oh man. Fuck. We failed. Can't even get him down. Time! The day just ended. It's 31 minutes, 42 seconds. Fuck. Damn. That hurts more than I thought it would. But to end this off on an even lower note, I still need to spin the wheel one last time. We're going to spin the wheel here. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button and subscribe for more chaotic content. It's fucking goober. My first pal is the last pal to go. But hey, if you're looking for something right now, check out this video. That'll pop up here in a minute. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye! Goober. Listen to me, buddy. Where are you going? Don't run away, Goober. Don't make this harder than it has to be. You cute son of a bitch. I was so uh, disappointed in getting you. And now that it's your end, I feel so bad, buddy. I really do. Here. Come here. One final meal. All right. Goodbye, buddy. Goodbye. Sorry. And that's a wrap. I'm not crying. I'm crying. <laughs>